Welcome into PressBox Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of PressBox and PressBoxOnline.com. And I'm with Luke Jackson and the old left-hander Ross Grimsley for another edition of PressBox Live, the baseball edition. We talk baseball every Monday around this time. Uh, we are brought to you by some really good folks, and we hope you'll consider using them. What company makes your home more energy efficient, purifies your air, kills all viruses, and qualifies you for $6,000 in rebates? That would be A.J. Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at ajmichaels.com. And of course, if you're craving that classic New York deli experience, look no further than the new Atman's Deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point, corned beef piled high, hand-rolled bagels, and something different, a bar. That's right. Atman's has food and drink specials every day. They're now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang out at our bar for the next O's game. That could be tonight at Atman's Deli, an authentic taste of Baltimore tradition since 1915. Find us at Harbor Point or visit atmansdeli.com. Gentlemen, um, thought I'd start to show off today by telling you that I'm uh, about to pursue a new career. Um, I'm going back to school to study uh, Japanese. I want to learn the Japanese language uh, so I can get a job as a major league player's interpreter. Um, what do you think of that idea, Ross? I, I tell you what, I'd go for it. I would yeah. go for it. I'm and, still young enough. I'm still young enough. You remember Don Blassing game? Sure. Bla it, it, they his, used to call him, wasn't his name Blazer? It might have been, but his son uh, worked for the Phillies, and we right. had a uh, we had a pitcher that was Japanese, and he was he spent a lot of time in Japan, and he was an interpreter. So that's uh, I, I think that's a good thing. I think you should go for it. I'm still wondering how how an interpreter got access to sixteen million dollars of somebody's hey. money. Anyway, uh, we are here to talk uh, baseball and all things baseball. So I slid that in. Um, we got another pitcher before we talk about the O's, Spencer Strider now, arguably the best pitcher in all of baseball uh, the last year and a half or so, uh, out for the season. Luke? Yeah, it's just a shame because he's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, and this is his second elbow procedure, if yeah. I remember correctly. Uh, so hopefully uh, he can come back from this and, and be a full go at some point next year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's a lot of fun to watch. He's what 97 to 100 with a fastball with a wipeout slider. He had developed a nasty changeup and a curveball, too. Uh, and so he was going to expand his repertoire this year. We won't get a chance to see that, but yeah, it's just a shame. Yeah, it's it really is. And it'll be interesting to see how the uh Atlanta Braves attempt to fill that that rotation spot. Guys, um, didn't didn't he uh, didn't the doctor down there? What's his name, Doctor Meisner or Meister? Meister. Meister. He uh, supposedly he has a newer procedure that brings these guys back uh, in under under twelve months. Yeah, that's right. the brace technique or something. Right. Like Whatever. That. Yeah, but so I'm not sure. Th this was very definitive, so it must have been a pretty substantial tear. Yeah. Well, I'm he, like it looks like I saw uh, an interview that he did, and he explained uh, all of the problems. And he said he could look at an MRI and tell what the pitcher threw. Yeah, by by the damage in his elbow, which is pretty amazing. But that's uh, I, I can understand it. But he he really uh, uh, talked about the problems with guys trying to throw max effort, uh, mm -hmm. the different breaking balls and throwing them. Uh, to get maximum spin. Ross, can I interrupt you for one yeah, second? Go ahead. Can you move yeah. your camera just a little bit? You're cut off. At uh, your... That's because I'm drooping down. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you got half, you got half see, of me. We want the whole Ross. The whole thing. I hear you, man. I hear you. <laughs> we pay for the whole thing, man. The you whole got it. You got it. <laughs> hey, um, Luke, before we dive into the Orioles, uh -huh. you got to see a relief pitcher for the uh, Oakland A's who I've gotten to witness a couple of times. And last year when he first came up, the A's were going to use him as a starter. Uh, what's it? Mason Miller? Mason Miller. So after Scotty Scheffler had the uh, Masters wrapped up with a few holes to go, I flipped yeah. over to for the end of the uh, Nationals A's uh, contest. And I saw 
the A's closer, Mason Miller, throwing up to 103. Uh-huh. Absolutely he phenomenal it, stuff. He brings a nasty, quick. nasty yeah. slider. And after that outing, and the Nationals had no chance because not only was he going <laughs> throwing 103, he was getting a little bit off the corner as well. And so it didn't take very long for him to uh, take care of the Nationals. And after that outing, I was like, did I just watch the most electric arm in baseball? And he's the Oakland A's closer. Like, <laughs> where, like where did this come from? Yeah. So he's, I guess he, I don't know if that amazing. was the first time I had ever watched him or if it was the second, but I, that might have been the first time I'd seen him up to 103. And I was like, whoa. And I think guys like this popping up, not all the time, not 103, but uh, triple he, digits all the time now. He may be a Tommy John guy who's had a Tommy John surgery already once. Um, Ross, 103, what it takes out of the human arm, would it be fair to say if they wanted to try and keep him healthy a whole season that, you know how with like Kimbrel we worry about three games in a row. Would you not want to, in other words, the recoup from throwing 103, would that be better if they never pitched him in back-to-back days? You know, I mean, pitching, throwing that velocity is really, uh, and the effort that you have to put in to do that uh, really takes its toll on you. Obviously, back-to-back days would be uh, a little bit of a problem, but it's like over a week, if you throw too many times over a week, that is a problem. Yeah. Now, if you if you can spread it out, but if if the games are on the line and you're you're the closer and you're available, and most guys are going to say, "I'm available. I want right. a pitch." Well, they but, have two other they have two other guys. They have Danny Jimenez and Lewis Erg. I think it's yeah. Pronounced. They've you got know, some good arms they, in that bullpen. They yeah. they have a couple good arms. I think they could try. I mean, I would really want to keep that guy healthy. Sure. And get him in 45. You know, he might get 45 saves if he's in 45 games. Right. Rather than trying to get 60 out of him and ending up where he's on the IL for a substantial play. Yeah. You know, the big the big thing is obviously pitching back-to-back days. Uh, got three days at the – I mean, I wouldn't even consider that with yeah. the problems that guys are having, but it comes down. It's not so much the one day. It, it is the combination of days over a week, say that's too much. And uh, that will lead to a problem because one of the biggest problems is uh, guys throwing when they're tired. And when you get tired, you try to get back to where you normally were before. And that throw Well, if you watch guys, the mechanics, there's really <laughs> mechanics are awful now. And that's a, a leading cause of injuries. Yeah. And uh, but guys trying to throw harder than they're capable of throwing, especially when they're tired, that's another problem that leads to injuries. All right, let's whip around back to the Orioles, Luke. Uh, as you know, as editor, I uh, turned in my uh, MLB power rankings uh, this week, and what I wrote about the Orioles was basically fans expected better start because partly because of the schedule the Orioles had you know when you look at the schedule and you see the Angels Kansas City Pittsburgh you tend to think that's the easy guys but we played five teams including the Brewers and Boston who total a 47 and 31 record combined that has a little something to do with the fact that the Orioles are just nine and six Right, and I really like some of the uh, steps forward those teams have made, particularly Kansas City. Kansas City desperately needed to find some veteran pitching this offseason. They were able to do that with Michael Waka and and Seth Lugo, who have been really good. And then a turning point for them was uh, being able to pry Cole Reagans away uh, from Texas in the uh, Chapman deal. And Bobby Witt looks like one of the five best players of baseball. So, I mean, if you're talking about a starting point, for a build, Cole Reagan's in the rotation, Bobby Witt in your lineup, it's pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think under Ron Washington, L.A. will be better. And I think yeah. they've shown that since the, really, game three. Uh, be, after game two, Ron Washington had a team meeting, uh, two blowout losses in Baltimore. And since then, they've played a lot better. They're and six, and six, they're six right. and six in 12 games since then. Right. So, and I don't know what that had to do with it, uh, if anything, but. It might just be coincidence. Uh, Pirates, they're 
they're you mentioned before the season stand that they've got a chance to be like the 22 Orioles, a team yeah. to take a big step forward toward and, contention. And, and they may be a little bit better than the 22 Orioles were considering, you know, where right. they are. And they've got a big, big, big arm on the way who should be in the major leagues, hopefully by early June, perhaps in Paul Skeens. And every one of his starts is going to be a must watch deal. Uh, and then the other one, and Ross and I were talking about this before we went on the air, the Brewers look really good. And they they've, they are really good at retooling on the fly. I thought they got a couple of real nice pieces uh, for Corbin Burns. Uh, Joey Ortiz is going to be a solid infielder for them for the next six years uh, at pretty good rates. And D.L. Hall, I think he probably fits better as a reliever. We've talked really? about do you that. Think, do you think that? <laughs> We've talked about that. I couldn't, on I couldn't help sitting out there Saturday and going, <laughs> this guy's not a starting pitcher. <laughs> I don't get it. And so, uh, and but you look at that lineup, they're scoring about six and a half runs a game, Stan. Yeah. And Reese Hoskins was a nice ad for them. And if they can get Yelich back, and hopefully nothing's you know seriously wrong with him. I mean, they were bashing the ball all over Camden Yards all weekend without Christian Yelich. And they've got Jackson Churio. They have Wilson Contreras, who's been really good. Freelich. Uh, yeah, Brandon, uh, Brandon Tarang, who's a nice player. He's so nice player. I, I, I like what they have going on, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ross, any thoughts you have 15 games in for the Orioles so far? Well, it, it's – I mean, we kind of, you know, we're, we're, was hoping that the pitching would be better uh, starting-wise, and I, I think that is something that – uh, you were hoping that that Ir Irwin would uh, would hold his own a little bit, and Wells, you know, I mean, that, that's a, another thing. But you know, after the first two guys, uh, it, you know, and now it's a crapshoot. Kramer, he's going to have his days, and, but uh, and, and the bullpen, I mean, that's you, you lose the big guy last year, you lose two of your starters, uh, you're kind of hoping to mix and match, so uh, and get them until they come back. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, uh, the, the, the swing, so what the guys did swinging the bats in spring training, I, I thought that was a good sign. And, and I think the runs, I mean, they're in the top in several categories and hitting pitching is not, uh, even though they are, they got a three, uh, earn run average, they don't walk a lot of guys. So that, that's a good thing. But I think the pitching could be, if the pitching gets better, especially in the starting, uh, role, uh, you you need a couple more guys to start pitching uh, starting wise to mm -hmm. to help out and they, they should be okay but I mean it's just uh, everything revolves around pitching and de and defense as well. Luke, yeah. Jake, Luke Jake Webb has been pretty good. Yes, again he looks like he did when we first got him right. last year. But when I look at the names at the at the very back of that bullpen, Jake Webb and now the guy they picked up from the Mets, Johan Johan. Ramirez, mm -hmm. I guess part of that is one of those slots is going to go to CNL Perez when he comes back. Right. And, and I guess the other slot gets taken by Bradish or Means, you know, whichever With a starter being bumped to the bullpen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just, it's just something seems missing on this staff because it's yeah. got a lot of pieces to it. Um, but I, I wanted to throw out a topic. It was interesting. I was sitting next to Peter Schmuck, who writes mm -hmm. now for BaltimoreBaseball.com. And I said, you know, it's only two weeks. I said, I'm not so sure they've got the right infield alignment defensively. Are you set that the best infield that they have, that they can present? I'm not talking about hurting anybody's feelings. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's Holiday at second, Westberg at third, and Henderson at short? It sure seems to me. Like and I'm not, I'm thinking about writing this. I got to see another couple weeks. Right, right. But boy, I'd really like to see a day where Holiday was playing the position he's played his entire career, and Westberg played the best position he is capable of. And I still I'm not sold that Henderson is a long term guy. It's short. So. I don't want to say that there's politics involved, but Gunnar Henderson earned the opportunity to play shortstop every day in 2024. He earned that last year. 
And they, I'm assuming that they told him that he's going to be the everyday shortstop. That doesn't mean that he's going to be the everyday shortstop for the rest of his Orioles career. Uh, but I think for this year, he's the shortstop. That being said, to your point, is Westbrook's arm a little soft for the left side? Yes. Is he a better fit at second base where his A, well, his athleticism and range plays at second or third, but his arm plays better at my, second. My bigger question, my bigger question is Henderson capable of making, look, he's a great athlete. Nobody's saying right. he's less than we think he is or anything like that. But there seems like an awful lot of balls that he did. That's why I say I got to watch a couple more right. weeks that he's just missing getting to. And then he corked that throw yesterday. Now, they wouldn't have had the double play. But the throw, you're lucky Mountcastle was the first baseman. If that was a six-foot first baseman, that ball would be 10 feet over his head. So, a gunner's arm, while very strong, one of the strongest. Erratic. It's a little erratic. It's always been like that. Yeah. That is like since he signed, it's always been a little erratic. So, but he's still only 22 or 23 years old. He's young enough to be able to fix it. And I think he has the ability to do that. However, to your point, it's a little bit erratic. And we've seen that in the first two, you, uh, two weeks of the season. Do you or Ross see any of the problem I see with him just missing some balls that no. I get the sense that Holiday would be making? No, is Hol not is Holiday, is Holiday a better shortstop than Henderson? I see. I don't, I haven't seen enough Holiday at shortstop. And, and, and I think the other, the other thing, the other thing is Henderson, a uh, better third baseman. I didn't love him at third base I last year. Love I, actually him third. Liked, I actually liked him more at short last year. Right. I think that if he played, if you had Gunnar Henderson at short at third base every single day, he would be fine there. And right. he, he would make it work. Uh, in terms of I, – I haven't seen enough Holiday at short to really give you a great evaluation of him at short. It, His arm it, is a little softer than Henderson's. Right. It's just it's just that when you go back to the year that they moved Ripken from third to short, sometimes, sometimes it takes balls by the people that make the decisions to say – make the tough call with Gunner and say, we think we're a better club with holiday, but I guess it's hard to do that because we're not going to see holiday. It's short, you know, just to be able to really right. match it up. They have to know. I'm not saying I know. I just sense we got a, a second, we got a second baseman who's out a little out of position. Uh, and it just, and frankly, you might have a third baseman who's a little out of position. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm wondering if the the better I don't let's let, we'll save it and redress. And, and it. I will say this that in April, from both a pitching standpoint and a defensive standpoint, sometimes it doesn't always look particularly clean. And you yeah. see this throughout the major leagues this year that there's it's kind of sloppy defensively. And I think in a couple weeks that'll calm down a little bit around let's, the league. Let's hope and, so. And we'll we'll and, readdress and we'll, it at we'll, that time. Yeah, and we'll revisit it at that time. Yeah. All right. I ask you the, both the, though, the, to the look defense at it. Or, the defense around the league is pretty uh <laughs> boy, that watching that Boston club, that well, was that yeah. was what absolutely what about Pittsburgh in their outfield? It when it, Pittsburgh was there. But Pittsburgh got off to a great start last year. Right. And, and they they wilted, but watching watching their defense. And this is something that I had heard before ever saw them, is that they, you know, they didn't communicate on fly balls with the outfield or the infield. Right. And they looked awful, you know, but, and that's something that will uh, run its course and, and uh, take some pro, you know, start causing problems as the season progresses. And that's what happened last year. Well, with yeah. the, with the pirates. Um. Luke and, and Ross, Mike Elias addressed some of the uh, questions fans have. Uh, he did an impromptu uh, presser, you know, down in the dugout. I think it was at the dugout. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there at the time. Um, about just saying, hey, we're thrilled we've got all this talent in the minor mm -hmm. leagues. And it seemed like in what he said, there were about three or four mentions of the old cliché these things always have a way mm -hmm. of working themselves out, i.e. an injury to right. somebody. 
but he made it very clear. And I thought it was, it was good that he did that. Hey, we haven't given up on Austin Hayes yet. Austin right. Hayes has been an important no. part of this club's rebirth. And a lot of people want to dismiss him after 10 days. It's, it's complicated. Now Colton Kowser has complicated the scenario, but Ross, you played in, in big league locker rooms for a long time. Competition, it really, at the end of the day, it's not to be upset about that we got competition for playing time, is it? No, absolutely not. And that just, you know, it usually, uh, I know in the pitching department, you know, one guy feeds off another guy. Yeah. And you, you want to you wanna go out and do what he did or better. And the same thing with, with, with the hitters, you know, but – I mean, it's early in the season, uh, guys, I, I know many guys that started their careers, Ripken, Eddie Murray, Robin Yount, started off struggling. Uh, Rich, what about Richie Dower? Richie Dower, I what was thinking did. of that. Holy cow. We drove to the ballpark in the van with him, and he was a mess. He, he, he could, must he have been beside fight. himself. What was he, he like? Two was, for four? It, it, was he like two for 44? It was, re, it was awful. It, it was terrible. But – these guys, I mean, the players, if they don't, if they just keep an even keel and they keep working, they'll come out of it. They do what you did to get you to the big leagues. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll make an adjustment. Then you have to make an adjustment and that, that's what it's about. But you start getting down on yourself and I've seen that happen with players too. You know, they, they get down and, uh, uh, next thing you know, now they they play their way right out of the big leagues. But, uh, you know, somebody, Austin Hayes, Austin Hayes, a great defensive player. You know, he's going through, he, you know, people make adjustments and they, and pitchers make adjustments. Then you, you have to make an adjustment. And but, if mentally, you don't, but mentally, the fact that he's got a competitor now taking playing time from him, it does shake you up a little. Sure. Of course, it causes yes. some but, self analysis. But the, other, the other thing, the other thing is you're not only playing for the Orioles. You're playing for, for 29, 29 other teams. teams. Yeah. You know, and that if they don't want you here, then I mean, obviously you want to stay here and wherever you're at, especially on a decent team that has a chance to go into playoffs and, and very possibly go to the World Series. Who knows? But uh I mean you just got to go out and work every day and, and take the the little the minor uh, uh positives that come along and just expand on those. And next thing you know, you're back. As soon as you think you're down and out, something happens and you're back on a roll again. And it, it's it's a game of ups and downs and a lot of negatives, a okay. lot of negatives. And you Luke, just have to uh, if, you know take the positives and build off of that. Luke, if you get a chance and look at your phone, maybe you've mm -hmm. got today's lineup is out. Uh, it's a battle tonight at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, a battle of number five starters, Louis Varland is pitching for the Minnesota Twins. And, Luke, you know I've always been a f somewhat of a fan of Cole Irvin's. It's time for him to step up, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he could use a good start tonight. Yeah. There's no question about that. I think – so the Orioles have won nine baseball games so far this year. I think seven of them have come in Burns or Rodriguez starts. Yes. I so they need Kramer, Wells, Irvin to step up, pitch better starting tonight yeah. yeah Irvin could use a good one yeah that would be a good one do you see the lineup yet yep. I got uh Henderson leading off playing short Rutschman at oh, so they didn't they, move him tonight the third and they didn't they didn't they move didn't, him they didn't listen to us okay. uh catching and batting second Rutschman <laughs> uh DHing and hitting third O'Hearn uh first base and hitting cleanup Mountcastle uh then hitting fifth and in right field Kowser. Uh, playing third and hitting sixth, Jordan Westberg didn't move him either. Yep. Uh, uh, center field and hitting seventh, Cedric Mullins, another good day for him yesterday. Uh, playing left field and hitting eighth, Austin Hayes, and playing second and hitting ninth, Jackson Holiday. You know, it's that 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 adage of these things take care of themselves. Right now is a good day for Santander to take a day yep. off. He yep. hasn't been. I know he yeah. hit the home run in Boston, but he hasn't he hasn't been hitting. swinging at too many balls. Yeah, and he's just not seeing it well. And we've seen this time and time again with Tony, where he's kind of streaky. He can go through two week funks yeah. where he's swinging at balls that are about oh I don't know 
two, three baseballs above the zone and yep. getting beat on that pitch time and time again. And then we've seen two week stretches where he can carry an offense, right? And so he's in a funk right now, but he's going to get it going. You don't worry he about it. He leads the team in RBIs and tied with home runs. So no. and, and I know, you know, I know. You, you know, you Tony's go. going to going to get it going. You you know the yeah. track record. You know, this guy has hit in the middle of this lineup uh, very effectively for, for some time now. But Ross, that, that thing where, where the manager has worked it out to get Hayes in, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's important to that player mm -hmm. who's struggling sure. and having a little self doubts. And he's got a guy stealing playing time, but he worked it out by playing. He played Hayes one night, I uh, forget where he played Friday, but he got him in left field sa Saturday. He had Kowser in center. And tonight he's got Hayes in left and Kowser in right and Mullins is playing. So he's mixing and matching. Yeah. Uh, but I think the most important thing right now is keeping Colton Kowser's bat in there. Right. And right. I would agree that Cedric Mullins is looking like he might be on the verge of breaking out a little bit. Luke. Yeah, I think the past, I would say, week or so, Cedric's looked pretty good. And I I think he's playing at a really high level defensively. And that gives him oh, a long road with, uh, with Brandon Hyde because yeah. Brandon knows he can trust him uh, in center field. That goes a long way. And yesterday, I know he hit the home run, but he also hit a double off of a lefty. And that was yeah. his first hit off of a lefty this season. Uh, and let's uh, we would love to see Cedric hang in there against lefties this year and stay in the lineup every day. All right. You know, it's, yeah. it's a good thing. You got uh, the manager that kind of sticks with you and gives yep. you opportunities. That means a lot. And I'm sure he's in their ear uh, trying to be as positive as he can with them. And some of these guys, they got, you know, they've done some good things in the past and you just can't give up on them. And until, uh, you know, you get a little bit more into the season and see what's really going yeah, on. Brand, yeah, Brandon doesn't want to kick to the curb the guys who helped get him here. No, yeah, and no, that's you – know. Weaver was the same way. But, yeah. You know, I mean, you did something good for him. He's going to remember it, you yeah. know. And uh, you have to – I know if you made a team out of spring training with Earl, you had to play your way off the team. Yeah, I mean, if you, had, if, if you had the lineup card filled out, like, online by the fans, Hayes would never play another game. For like sure. That. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. and, and they they should go to the game, watch the game, enjoy it. Let the people that understand. I got in a conversation with somebody. Actually, I got a conversation with somebody on Twitter. It's with Press Box. And, and I'm going, have you ever, do you, have you ever run a major, have you ever run an organization? Have you ever, you know anything about major league players? <laughs> it, you can't, well, you don't have to do that. I'm going, Really, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Don't don't tell me that. But I mean, it, it's I mean, you, you know, players what they think, how they think. Like I said, this is a game with a lot of negatives, and it's very easy yeah. to get down and kick yourself in the butt, you know. But uh, yeah, and you've talked about this before, Ross. That you say today's players get down on themselves quicker than maybe players of your era did. No, I, 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 you know, possible, but I, okay. we all get down at times and you just have to, as you, the, the older you get, the more experience you get, you find ways to take little positives and build off of them. That's like the golfers. What about the golfers in the, in the masters? Some of the shots they make, they could just, they could just give up. You see, I, I think uh, I, I, Dustin Johnson, what, what, the, no, Hovland. What about he missed a putt and he went up there and just tapped it nonchalant and missed it again and did it with a triple. That you can't do that, you know, and, and you learn from that. You know, every every play, every pitch, every swing, every ball thrown to you, you mm. gotta you gotta stay positive. And it's it's hard to do, but you learn to do it after a while. And the people that do it consistently are your Hall of Famers, you know. Are your outstanding players. Ross has got our last word tonight. We'll be back next Monday. I'll be on with Eric. Um, Eric. Uh, Garfield. 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 From Florida <laughs> Prospects Report on Thursday, talking a little <laughs> old prospects. And Brain dead a little will bit. Be back. <laughs> this show will went be too back long. It, it, we're missing names. It's a whole thing. Okay. Sorry. We'll be back next. We'll be back next Monday. <laughs> Uh, for uh, A.J. Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning and our friends at Harbor Point, the new Atmans at Harbor Point, 
uh, and our friends at the Costas Inn. Uh, we'll see you down the road. O's versus the Twins the next two nights and then Wednesday afternoon at 105. Enjoy your baseball. That's it for now. Bye.